Okay, welcome everyone. Um, I don't do a lot of live stream videos, partly because I live out in the country. We don't have the best Wi-Fi, and also because it stresses me out because I always seem to run into some kind of <laughs> tech issue. But so far, it's working. So that is all that I need. Um, thank you for joining in. I have been on YouTube for ten years on April 5th. So exactly a week ago, last Friday, it was my official 10 year anniversary of doing yoga with Cassandra and, you know, releasing online yoga classes, which is so strange. Um, it's so strange to think that 10 years have already gone by that I've been doing something consistently for 10 years is very, very surreal in a way, it feels like time has flown by. I feel like I just started my channel a year ago. And at the same time, it also feels a lifetime away. You know, I was 23 years old when I started Yoga with Cassandra. Obviously, I'm 33 today. And anyone who is in their 30s and beyond, you know, can probably relate to the fact that who you are in your 20s changes so much. There's so much growth that happens during that decade of life. And that was certainly the case and true for me. So when I think about who I was and what my life was like when I first started yoga with Cassandra, I mean, at 23, I think I had maybe, I was still in school. It was like my last year of university. I was graduating and I was either just about to start my job with the city. No, I was, yes, I was working with the city of Ottawa. So I had like my little government job, um, that I was doing along with school. And I was with my husband, although we were not married at the time, you know, we were just dating and I don't know, just where I was living, the things that I was preoccupied with. It was just such a different world and a different life. I was broke, <laughs> you know, like really, um, hustling in a lot of ways. And, you know, just, just being like the classic 23 year old girl, like trying to figure out what to do with my life and what, just like this overwhelming sense of like daunting responsibility that I think a lot of people get in their early twenties, where all of a sudden, like you're out of the school system. So there's nothing really funneling, funneling you through life. The next step isn't quite clear. You know, you're out of school and now you actually have to just go out there and make a life for yourself and figure out what you're going to do. And that was such a scary time and a scary thing for me. And thank goodness I started this YouTube channel. Um, it has exceeded my wildest dreams by far. And it all started so naively and so humbly and embarrassingly, which I'll show you in a minute, um, you know, as I've been reflecting on like the past decade and what it means to me to have done yoga with Cassandra for 10 years and to have built what it is that I have built, I've really been taking the time to go back to the beginning to really look at where I came from and what those I don't know, like what year one really looked like. And it's quite embarrassing because it was pretty bad. <laughs> it's kind of a miracle that I was able to get as big as I've gotten because it was, uh, it was a struggle. <laughs> it was not great. So I thought something, you know, I was like, Oh, what should I do for this 10 year anniversary? You know? And I was like, I think I just want to do a little trip down memory lane. We can all poke fun at, at me. And I kind of just want to show you those early videos, like the first few years and just kind of take you guys behind the scenes and share with you how I was doing what I was doing and what was happening in my life at the time. And I don't know, just give you like some little tidbits um, because it was really hard. Like the first four years of yoga with Cassandra were incredibly difficult for the first three and a half years. So for the first year and a half of yoga with Cassandra, I was a full-time government employee and then for the next year and a half to two years after that, I was also still a government employee, but I went to a four day work week. So um, I would have Fridays off because for that first year and a half, 
I was working like a crazy person. You know, I was doing my regular 40 hour work week. And for about six of those months, I was still also a full time university student, which was really, really difficult. I was doing my 200 hour teacher training. I was juggling way too many things. And then I was also trying to build up this YouTube channel. So for about a year and a half, I was really running myself through the ground, like working 80 hour plus uh, a week. And finally, when I wasn't able to do that anymore, my work. They were super supportive. They thought it was so cool that I was doing this yoga thing online. You know, not a lot of people were doing that back then. And I went to a four day work week. So that gave me a little bit of a breather because before then I would just work on yoga with Cassandra on evenings and weekends. And now at least I got to have Fridays off from work so that I could have a full work day of just yoga with Cassandra on Fridays. So for about three and a half to four years, I juggled both. I was doing yoga with Cassandra as well as my government job with the city of Ottawa. And finally, I was able to make that switch and go to just running this full time. And, you know, when I started Yoga with Cassandra, this YouTube channel, I was not building a business. Like there was no, there was no vision behind it. Honestly, I would love to, I would love to be able to sit here and say that I had this big dream and this big vision and I had a plan and I knew what I wanted to do. I absolutely did not. Like the truth is, is I was a newly certified yoga teacher. I was very eager to begin teaching, but I was having a hard time finding jobs. If any of you are teachers here, you know that when you first graduate from your 200 hour teacher training, it's really hard to get hired by studios because you have no experience, right? So who is going to hire you? So I just had this idea of like, well, I've always enjoyed YouTube. I like to watch YouTube videos and YouTubers. And I always thought, oh, it'd be so cool to be a YouTuber. You know, like it seemed so fun and interesting to be able to like make your own TV show. Um, So I thought, well, maybe I'll just record a couple of yoga classes. That way, when I'm applying to jobs at yoga studios, I can send them a link to my YouTube videos and they can get an idea of my teaching style. And maybe that'll help me get ahead and, you know, like buff up my resume a little bit. Like that is the extent (laughs) to which I thought I would be teaching on YouTube. Thankfully, um, and I'll show you like a few things happened with YouTube that allowed me to see like what an opportunity this would be. And, you know, I realized along the way, like, oh, people make money online. That's crazy. (laughs) So I dove in and um, the rest is history. Here we are 10 years later. So let's all take a funny little trip down memory lane. Let me see if I can share my screen with you. I'm reading the messages. Thank you so much. Everyone is so sweet. It's really neat to see everyone from all over the world. Okay, let me share my little screen with you. I'm going to take you to back in the day. Oh, sorry, one second. Here you go. Do you see this? You should be able to see this. Yes, perfect. This is so embarrassing, honestly. Um, It's really funny, but it is quite embarrassing. So here we are on my YouTube channel with my oldest videos. And, you know, I can look back on these and laugh. And I can look back on them with fondness because even though it is embarrassing to see how horrible (laughs) the quality of these videos are, I'm also really proud of, you know, younger me for taking this risk and for putting myself out there. It's not easy to put yourself online for everyone to see and, you know, to open yourself up to criticism. Like it, it takes a good amount of guts to do it. So, you know, I think there's like an advantage that comes with youth where you don't overthink things as much. Like I, if anyone out here is still like in their teens and early twenties, like now is the time to try something a little bit outrageous because I just feel like I notice myself, like the bravery kind of, or my guts, I guess, like my gutsiness diminishes with age because you just, I don't know, things are just like a little bit more serious now in my thirties. So I'm really really thankful to 23 year old me for giving something like this a try, you know, like it takes, it takes some courage. You know, I definitely have opened myself up to a ton of criticism, um, which is 
fine. It comes with the territory. I've also opened myself up to a ton of love and praise and kindness. So, you know, there's a good and a bad to it. So I'm definitely going to be the last person to complain about that. But let's all just laugh at me a little bit. Okay. So here we go. You should be able to see my cursor right here. This is the first official yoga class that I ever released here on it's YouTube. It was a you. 30 minute core flow. I'm just going to mute this here. And as you can see, even I have ads that I have to watch through. I know ads are annoying, guys, but they are the way that YouTubers, you know, earn an income. Um, I really wanted to show this to you guys. So just, just everything, okay? This is 10 years ago. This opener, first of all, Cassandra Reinhardt Yoga. This website doesn't even exist anymore. I don't even have this website. This Instagram account doesn't exist anymore. I still have this Facebook page. This is still my YouTube URL. But, you know, this was like, this photo is the first ever photo shoot I ever did. And I was so excited and I was so nervous. Um, and then the video, like, look at this. Look at these black bars. I wasn't even filming in the proper, like, aspect ratio. And they changed, like, throughout the class. Like, oh, now they're a little bit narrower. And now, oh, for some reason, now we're back to being full screen. <laughs> And I don't know. I just think it's really funny. So this was filmed in my old house. My husband and I, um, we were originally renting from that house. And like three months after moving in, the landlord said he was selling. It was a small little townhouse. And we ended up like uh, being able to purchase it. So this was like our first home. It was really exciting. And I had this little space upstairs that I decided to make turn into my yoga room. And my husband and his friends came over and put down this flooring for me because it was carpet before and they helped to paint. And, you know, it was just really sweet, but it was a very small space and I didn't know what I was doing. I had no equipment. So I was literally just filming with my cell phone. And remember this was 10 years ago. So cell phones were not as good as they are today. The cameras were certainly not as good as they are today. So I would just prop my phone up, I would like either use scotch tape and tape it to the wall, or I would prop it against like yoga blocks and books and things like that. And my phone could only record for 10 minutes at a time. So as I was doing these kinds of classes, every nine minutes or so, I'd have to get up, rush to my phone, hit stop, re-record, rush back to my yoga mat and keep going. And if you've ever looked at these videos, you know that I'm doing a voiceover. I'm not talking as I'm doing the class and teaching because I had no microphone. I was using this exact microphone that I'm using now just to do voiceovers, which a friend of mine who's an audio engineer kindly gifted me. So I was really like, you know, what's that expression? It's like, no one makes it to the top alone, you know, and I really do believe that. Like there were a lot of people who were um, really kind and gracious to me with like this silly, silly little dream of mine to teach online yoga. So it was just, I don't know, it was just so funny, but I will give myself this, okay? Do these classes look ridiculous? Does this video look horrible? Yes, 100%. <laughs> it's really embarrassing to look at, but my sequences were good. Okay. So the teaching itself was still good. Um, the sequences were still good. Um, but it's just like, I don't know. It just, I just think it's cute. It makes me laugh. Um, it's very humbling, I guess, to be able to see these beginnings and, you know, how it started and these first few classes. So I don't know. It just, definitely come an, a long way. So that happened for a while. Um, I put out these classes. I was always filming in this studio. This is the same studio. I just, sometimes I would decide like, do I want to have the window behind me or in front of me? Um, yin yoga, this was a good opportunity for me because there was not so 10 years ago, there were some online yoga teachers. I certainly was not the first one. I mean, I remember following um, Brett Larkin. Yoga with Adrian was already quite big, like quite popular 10 years ago. I think she's been on like 13, like many more years than uh, myself. Um, Leslie Fightmaster was around, you know, rest in peace to her. So Eckhart Yoga was another great one that I would follow religiously. So there were 
a couple, like some yoga teachers who were prominent on YouTube, but it's nothing like what it is today at all. And something that was not really wi widely available online at that time was yin. So yin yoga, there were very few full length classes. I think Bernie Clark had like two classes or something like that on YouTube. And I have, am, always will be probably a deep lover of yin. So I filmed this practice. This was literally just the practice that I was about to do myself. Um, I was about to get on my mat and do my own personal home practice. And I thought, I almost didn't record this because I thought, well, yin doesn't seem to be popular online. So probably no one wants this. And that was an early mistake. I mean, it could have been a big mistake. I'm glad I did not listen to that voice inside that says, oh, well, this isn't popular. People don't want this. So don't do it. There's a good lesson in there about, um, what's that quote? It's like, if you build it, they will come. Like sometimes you have to start something in order to attract an audience for it. So I almost made the mistake of assuming that because there wasn't a lot of popular yin yoga classes online, that perhaps yin would never work online and no one wanted it. Thank goodness I didn't listen to that. And I recorded it anyway, because of course, yin yoga is a huge part of my platform. It's a huge part of my teaching. And it's been a big reason, I think, for my success, because I do specialize in yin. And not a lot of yoga teachers necessarily specialize in yin. Like, look, I look like a little baby here. Like, I'm so young. I don't know. It's so funny to be able to look back on this. Um, it's really special to have these moments on camera, even if they are really embarrassing. I still have this table. I still have this little um, Buddha head statue, this little, um, bonsai tree. It's not even a real bonsai tree. I still have these drapes. I have everything. I don't throw a lot away. Um, but anyway, so I am glad that I listened to that voice inside me that told me to, you know what, just do it anyway, because it was a great lesson in learning to do what I want to do rather than focusing on what other people are doing and going from there. Then I kind of entered an era where I wanted to do a lot of yoga for athletes. This was primarily so yoga for rock climbers. At that time, my husband was rock climbing a lot and his friends were rock climbing a lot. So they would ask me like, hey, can you do a yoga session for rock climbers? And I thought, sure, absolutely. I can do that. So I recorded it and I really enjoyed like I have a deep love of theming and I really like the challenge that comes with themes. Um, and that comes with like creating a sequence that is really meaningful and useful to people. So I focused on that for a little while. So I did a yoga for rock climbers. You can see I have a yin yoga for runners here that I did. Um, these outdoor classes, this was our little yard outside. These will always be so special to me just because you can see Cleo and Kit Kat like weaving through my legs and running around and most of you, some of you maybe might know, like Cleo has terminal cancer. You know, she was diagnosed with uh, squamous cell carcinoma. It is terminal. There's, you know, not much that we can do about it, but I'm happy to say she's doing really well. But I know that, you know, even if she didn't have cancer, like our pets aren't with us forever. It's very special for me to have all these videos um, with them. So, you know, I was doing a little bit of everything, a yoga warm up. That was something else that I was doing for athletes. And then even this one, this one, this is a big pivotal moment for me. So let me show you this video here. This video, you'll notice it's the first time that I paid to rent a space to film. So I was trying to take myself a little bit more seriously. I was trying to add a little bit of like professionalism to this endeavor and to see if, you know, a nicer looking studio maybe would help me with views and would just help me, you know make things look a little bit better. So I'm trying to remember where this was. I think this was some kind of gym in Ottawa, like a fitness gym. And they let me rent the space. Um, like this is an old logo. I don't use that logo anymore, but yoga for weightlifters was a big moment. This was my first video that sort of like blew up and, you know, blew up. Like at this point in time, I 
this was, yeah, 10, nine, nine, 10 years ago, I maybe had a thousand subscribers. Okay. I was still very, very, very small. So when I say a video blew up, I mean, it probably had like, maybe like 5,000 views, you know, more than anything I could have ever imagined. This was a big deal for me. And this was a big deal for yoga with Cassandra as a whole, because what happened is this yoga class for weightlifters ended up being shared on uh, Reddit in a few subreddits for weightlifters and fitness and things like that, just as like a cross training video. And so a lot of people from that Reddit hub and that subreddit watched the class, did the class. And I got a lot of comments that from people who said, wow, I really like this. If this was a full program, I would buy it. You know, there are like a few moments, I think, in people's lives that change the trajectory of their lives. And even though this seems so small and innocuous, this was definitely a pivotal point for me because up until then, I had never considered charging for anything. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, I had never considered utilizing the online space and utilizing social media to earn income. And I know that in 2024 standards, this probably seems ridiculous because it's kind of like common lingo and it's part of the culture to like be an influencer or to have an e-commerce business or like a side hustle or to monetize, you know, social media streams. But in 2014, 2015, not as much. Like it really was not as big of a thing. So it honestly had never occurred to me that people would pay me to create yoga programs. Like I was still operating on the fact that I just thought, oh, it's really cool to be sharing yoga classes online. It's really cool to be able to connect with people from all over the world. I loved getting comments. You know, I would maybe get like three or four comments on each video and I would answer every single one and it would just, you know, make me so happy. And I thought, that's it. Like I never thought I would make money from YouTube. I never thought of of creating a business around it. But then when I started to get those comments and those requests from people who were weightlifters, powerlifters, did CrossFit, all that, and they said, if you turn this into a program, I buy it. I said, bet. (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to do that right now. (laughs) So that's exactly what I did. That's the first program I ever put together was a yoga for weightlifters program. Um, I think I filmed like six videos or something of varying lengths. I packaged it up. I sold it for like $29 on Udemy or something. And I still remember the day, like maybe a month or two later, I was, you know, at my day job in the office and I called my coworkers over and I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Like, like, look, people are buying it. I was like, I made $80 today. And that was, oh, it makes me emotional to think about it. Like it was such an amazing moment. Like the, the idea that people actually purchased was. What I was received and that people liked my teaching style and that they actually thought I was good at this. Like it was so, so special and so phenomenal. And I still just vividly remember that moment with my coworkers. They're next to me. We're refreshing the screen every 10 seconds to see if someone else bought this program. Um, and just getting so excited. And I was like, what if this happens every day or every month? You know, it was just so fun and so surreal. So that was definitely like a big moment for me. And I wanted to share that with you guys. So for a long time, it was just these humble beginnings. Um, This is another studio that I used at some point. The next, because the yoga for weightlifters did so well, I ended up doing this chair yoga class that's still quite fairly popular today. Like a few of my chair yoga videos are quite popular. It's so old. It looks so bad. I feel so bad because it's just like so ugly to look at and it's so poorly made. But again, like the content itself is good. The teaching is good. There's nothing wrong with what I'm teaching. It's just, it does not look good to to today's standards, but that's the next program I ended up putting together was a chair yoga program. And it actually still sells today. Like people still purchase that. So that was really, um, 
that was really special and really nice. This was filmed in California and San Francisco. My husband and I went for a trip. It was my first time filming outdoors. I was really nervous. I did not like it. Um, that was the moment I realized like I could never be like an actual influencer who like takes their phone now in public and like records themselves. I was so self-conscious. I really did not enjoy filming outside. Um, and I still have never really gotten over that. Like, that's why I love filming today outside. Cause I just film on my little yoga deck in the back and it's private and no one can see me, no one can bother me and it's perfect. Um, otherwise I get really self-conscious and I don't like it. Uh, yoga for runners. That's the next program I put together. You know, this one was not as popular because I think it's just like, at that point, I just didn't really know what I should be doing. Okay. Now we're entering a fun era that a lot of you probably recognize this era of the red brick wall. This is really, I think, you know, again, I was trying to take myself a little bit more seriously. Um, so I was actively investing money in the production value. Again, I say this in quote because it's not like I was spending a ton of cash, but what I would do is I would rent this studio. It's, it was in the Byward market in Ottawa. It was called a breather room. I think it still exists today. You could probably still rent it. Um, yeah, a breather room and I would book it for the whole day. So I'd have the whole room to myself and I would just do a batch shoot. At this point I had invested in a camera. Like I, I had an actual like DSLR camera so that I had a higher quality. I think I had a clip on lavalier microphone at that time. I don't remember if I was doing voiceover or if I had a microphone, but this was a big a big deal for me, you know, cause it would cost me a couple hundred dollars. Like at this point, I'm not making any money from YouTube, like at all. So this is all out of pocket. But again, because I had sold some courses, you know, the yoga for weightlifters, the chair yoga, I had a little bit of money. So I immediately used those funds to purchase a camera and to book some studio spaces. So kind of whatever money I had, I would just reinvest it to see what else I could do. You know, it was always, it was more like a game. Like I never thought I could actually get popular on YouTube. Like I didn't think it would actually happen for me, but it was almost a game of like, well, if I got a thousand subscribers, let's see if I can get two, you know? So it was really playful. There was no like, um, big pressure or expectation. I just wanted to see how far I could push this thing. And I just assume at some point it's going to cap out. Um, of course, never imagining that I would get to where I am. So yeah, the red brick studio was quite a moment. This was filmed in Halifax, Nova Scotia, really fun. This was at a cottage that my aunt rented. So my whole family was actually here and they were all kind of watching me. Um, this was in our yard. This is the same studio. So this white background here that you see with the little plus signs, it's the same room as the red brick wall, but it's just one side was a red brick wall. And then the other side was this white, I don't know, crosses or whatever. Um, you know, a story about this video, I remember getting a really nasty email from someone who had done this video um, <laughs> saying that it was a really unflattering outfit and that, you know, I needed to shed a few pounds or whatever. And it was just really vile, really horrible. Something, something that's interesting about being, having an online presence and being public online People assume that because they're like, oh, now you have millions of subscribers, you must get more hate or more trolls or more criticism. And I've actually found it to be the opposite. I found that when I was smaller and had a smaller audience with less people watching me, I had a lot more hate and negativity. People would complain about the sound of my voice, the outfit I was wearing, um, the way I sequenced the class, the, my looks, you know, my, my body weights. Like I would get a lot of emails and comments like that, that were really like rude. Um, and I think it's, and I was like, it's funny because you think the bigger you get, the more you get the negativity. And 
for some reason, it hasn't worked out that way. The bigger I've gotten, like, sure, there's always going to be people who are not happy, who don't like me, and it's fine. But the ratio has actually diminished for the most part. I'm really lucky that the yoga community is pretty nice group of people, you know, pretty people are pretty positive and pretty nice. Um, if I'm not someone's cup of tea, they just won't watch my video, you know, they'll go watch someone else's, which is fine. Um, but I think when you're a smaller creator, I think people think you're more attainable. They, they know you're more likely to read the comments, I think. So I think people get a little bit more emboldened to say things to you and to criticize you. Whereas like when you're so big, they just kind of assume I'm not going to read it, which I don't like, I can't keep up with all of the comments that I get, you know? So I don't know what it is about. I might be off and wrong on that theory, but I definitely, it was definitely harder in the beginning. I definitely had a lot of people nitpicking what I was doing, um, more so than I do now, but it's okay. You know, it, it's, it's a good, opportunity to build a bit of a thicker skin. I still do not have a thick skin by any means. I'm still very sensitive. Um, I'm still very sensitive to criticism. I'm very much a people pleaser. I never want to offend anyone or to uh, upset anyone. So that's, that's a tough part for me. I think about being online, but you know, you just sort of hope you get better. You know, it's gotten better with age. I think in your thirties, you kind of know who you are a little bit more so you can let things slide off your back a little bit. Okay. Here we are. Okay. So now this was eight years ago. So I've been doing YouTube for a few years. Also, I promise I'm not going to be live forever. Okay. This video, I'm going to wrap it up at some point. Um, I kind of entered my little vlog era. I was like, oh, would it be cool if I did like, so I did like an intro to my channel and that I did a little vlog when we went to Toronto. I did a little about me Q and A <laughs> session, you know, like another little Q and A here, a Chicago vlog. This Chicago, this was so fun. This was my 25th birthday. I went to a YouTube event, my very first YouTube event. I think I had about 10,000 subscribers at that time. That was a mind blowing number to me. Um, I was so, so overjoyed by that, you know, so I, I signed up to this free YouTuber event so I could go and network with all these other YouTubers. It was in Chicago. I had never been before. It was the same weekend as my 25th birthday. I traveled by myself. You know, I was on my own for the first like three days because it was like a little YouTube conference. And then my husband flew in and we celebrated my birthday. Like I just felt so independent and fun. And I was like, okay, like I'm really taking this YouTube thing seriously. I'm really giving it my best shot, you know? Um, so that was a really like special time. I don't know, just a really special time in my life. So little vlogs, I was doing a lot of like podcasts, whoever would have me on, I would go on their podcasts, um, really whatever I could do, I would try to do it. It's fun to look back at these videos. Like some of these videos are still very popular. Like this one hour vinyasa flow, 2.2 million views. That is insane. Like insanity. Um, and it's not like they got high views when I released it eight years ago, you know, like eight years ago, my views were still quite low, maybe a couple thousand views on each video at most. Um, it's only as my channel has grown, even the older library of videos, you know, the, the views have increased. The next big moment, this was a big deal. So you guys might recognize Brett Larkin. So I went to California I don't remember why. I don't know if it was just a little vacation, but Brett Larkin at the time, you might recognize her. So she, she has her own YouTube channel. Um, she focuses less on YouTube these days. She has a, she was kind of the first teacher or one of the first anyway, to create an online teacher training, like a 200 hour, 300 hour, 500 hour teacher training curriculum. So that's, primarily what she focuses on. But back then her channel was way bigger than mine. So I remember, you know, leaving a comment on her video and she replied and I was like, Oh my God, this is so cool because there was a moment in this YouTube thing where I did kind of start to get lonely a little bit just because 
no one can really relate to my work and what I was doing and the struggles I was facing, you know, having to learn how to film and edit and create a website and run social media and run a newsletter and do e-commerce and figure out your taxes and your business structure. Like it was just such a huge, steep learning curve and no one in my life really could relate to it. So I was fairly eager to connect with other yoga teachers who are teaching online. So I connected with Brett. We became friends. I think at the time, I'm pretty sure I remember I had 35,000 subscribers. It was massive to me, but I remember she had 80,000 subscribers and I had never seen a number that high. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I just thought that was surreal. I never, ever, ever thought I would get as big or bigger than Brett Larkin. Like it was crazy. So when I went to California, she was in living in San Francisco at the time we linked up and we did a few classes together. This was a big deal because Brett had an amazing production value right from the get-go. So she had a beautiful setup. She worked with videographers. She would have multiple cameras so that there would be multiple angles. Um, she had great microphones. Like she really was taking it seriously as if this was her own TV show, you know? And I was really inspired by that because at that time I just was still, I was just doing everything by myself really and kind of winging it, you know, um, on hope and a prayer. <laughs> and when I got home, I thought, okay, you know what? I kind of want to do this too. Like I want to invest even more money in this and really like put the time and effort into it. So when I got back, I filmed this year. This is um, a 14 day yoga challenge that I filmed yeah, eight years ago. And it was a paid program. I put one of the classes here for free on YouTube, but the rest was a paid program. This was a huge project. This is the first time that I hired a videographer. I paid for this set. Um, this was actually someone's like Airbnb that I rented someone that I knew to let me rent her Airbnb to record this. But I had a videographer, they did the editing. What was really challenging about this program is that there were, it was a 14 day challenge. So there were 14 yoga classes and I had to film all of them in two days. And let me tell you like seven classes that are 20 to 45 minutes long. Most of them are like, you know, powerful vinyasas. Like back in the day, I was doing a lot of like arm balances and they were very difficult, strenuous classes. I'm more in my like slow and flexy <laughs> era now, but before I was really like all about strength. So it was just really difficult. I'm glad I did it, but it was really difficult. Um, okay. Let me get a sip of my little sparkling water here and let me read the comments a little bit here. Okay. I want to address one of the comments. Someone's asking, um, can I do more iron yoga? Can I tell you how much I regret doing this iron yoga class? Okay. So this iron yoga video is fairly popular. The comments on it are excellent. So many people still to this day request more iron yoga. Okay. So iron yoga is just yoga with weights. So you hold some free weights. You could have wrist weights on you. Man, it is so hard. So I only say that I regret doing it because I don't enjoy iron yoga and I do not want to do that again. I just cannot bring myself and I injured myself doing this shoot. The thing is, is like, it's very hard to like do a powerful yoga class and teach throughout and manage the production of the video. So it was just too much on my body. I like hurt my back at some point. Cause it's like, you're talking, you're going back and forth. Like I'm still filming and doing everything myself. The weights were five pounds. It was too much. Anyway, I just like, I was like, I can't do this. Like, I, I don't want to do that. Let me do yin. Like, let me go back to relaxing, <laughs> you know, but it is a great workout. Like I will give myself this. If you are looking for something to kind of like kick your butt and get you sweating and really like work your muscles, that class is it. So that class is very good. Will I do another one? No, I don't want to. I don't want to do it ever again. I hate iron yoga. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry because I know people really would love for me to do more. 
I wish I could, man. I wish I could. I just cannot bring myself to do it again. So, so sorry. Yeah, five pounds. Like I know five pounds doesn't seem like much, but like five pounds in each hand, you're constantly holding them up like for 30 minutes. And it's too much. I can't, I can't do it. I can't be bothered <laughs> anymore. Okay, I want to show you this video. I promise I'm not going to be live for too much longer. This was, so this is eight years ago again. This was kind of the era of, um, you know, I'm an online yoga teacher, but I'm also an online yoga student. So I love to do online yoga classes, even still to this day. And especially back in the day, I was doing a lot of classes. I don't even know if this platform still exists, but back in the day, it was called Yoga Glow. Um, it might just be called Glow now, but it was like this online streaming platform where it was like a, a yoga studio where people could just go in and take a class in person, but they would always film their yoga classes and those classes would be put online on the platform on Yoga Glow. And I did those classes all the time. Um, my favorite teacher teachers were Joe Testula. I credit her, like I've never met Joe Testula. I have never taken an in-person class with her. She doesn't know who I am. I mean, I'm sure she doesn't know who I am. But I really feel like she gave me a solid foundation to become the teacher that I am. I learned a lot from her just watching how she teaches, how she sequences, how she cues. And I really integrated a lot of that into my own teaching. So I give her so many props, even though we've never met. She doesn't know who I am. I've never taken her class in person, but I practiced with her online for years and years. Um, and I love, so I have great respect. And if you like my style of teaching, you would probably love her style as well, because I, I've taken a lot from her. Um, so major props there. And the other teacher that I would follow a lot on Yoga Glow was Sianna Sherman, who is like my friend today. And, you know, we've traveled the whole world together. I've done her yoga teacher trainings and a bunch of other teacher trainings with her. Love her so much. Um, but anyway, I thought it was really cool how they would film live classes with students in them. And I kind of wanted to try to do that myself. So this was filmed at Elevate Yoga in Ottawa. This is where I used to teach um, when I was still living in the city. I loved Elevate Yoga. It was such a great studio. And I asked some of my friends um, and some of my students who were like my regulars in my yoga classes, if they would want to be in one of my videos. And the guy here in the red shirt and the blue shorts, that's my husband. So that's Anthony. Um, he was a really good sport about it. But yeah, I made them do this class and it was really, really, really fun. I haven't done any other ones like this just because it's really hard. Um, it's really hard to teach with other people there. And in the end, I just realized I prefer just being by myself and teaching alone but it is really cute and really fun to be able to look back on this now you know like I don't know it's just cute to be able to see my husband there so if you guys ever wanted to see who he was and what he looks like well you can just watch this video and he's right here and he's such a good sport like oh here I go I'm adjusting him because he's not doing the right thing <laughs> which is so funny yeah, he's a good sport. You know, I hustled for a long time when I was trying, trying to get established as a yoga teacher. For a long time, I was just, I would rent out space again because no one would hire me because I had no experience. So I was like, well, I'll create my own experience, right? Like sometimes you just have to take matters into your own hands. And this is also the power of being 23 and believing you can achieve anything, you know, you set your mind to. Um, which is such a beautiful trait. Um, so I started a YouTube channel. And then another thing that I did is I started to rent a studio and run my own classes, you know, so I would go door to door and I would put flyers in everyone's mailboxes, advertising my classes on the weekends, you know, and Anthony, my husband would come to every single one of those classes. He would get his coworkers to come to my classes. He at some point convinced his boss that I should be hired and lead corporate yoga at his work, you know? So I've really been very lucky to have a lot of people um, support me and support my dreams and believe that I could do these things and offer to lend a hand. Like I've really been very, very, very lucky. Um, I know that other people aren't necessarily so lucky to have 
people believe in them and support them and stuff like that. But I really be, am truly, truly blessed in that arena. Okay, my goodness, how far down do I want to go? I'm not going to go too much further back in time. So I kept going. Oh my gosh, why is there only one video here? This is strange. So I had a meditation challenge that I did. This was my first live challenge. I wonder, it, there were 30 of those videos. I wonder why only one of them is appearing. There should be 30 of these meditations. They're horrible. I mean, again, the quality is terrible on these, so I don't recommend actually doing them and watching them, but they're there. Another little video with Cleo. I treasure these so much. This was another studio space that I rented, again, with a videographer. I went through a lot of videographers before finding the one that would work for me. And that brings me to right here. This was another big pivotal point in yoga with Cassandra. So all of the videos that you see that were filmed with this fireplace in the back, um, yeah, this class was pretty, pretty popular, like almost 600,000 views. So this was originally supposed to be a project. This was supposed to be a program of 18 classes that I was producing for another company and they wanted to sell it on their website. And then they sent me the contract and they had all these awful things in the contract. Like I would only get 5% of the earnings on the program and I wouldn't be allowed to use the program anywhere else. And I would have to write a hundred blog posts for them over the next year. And I would have to produce an X amount of videos for them over the next year that they had the exclusive rights to and that I couldn't use and I couldn't sell, but they could sell, but they wouldn't be paying me for it. It was horrendous. Like it was truly, this is the first time that I really had to put my foot down and say like, actually, I'm worth more than what this opportunity, this is not even an opportunity. You're taking advantage of me. Um, and that was really hard for me because I thought at the time I had landed this amazing opportunity. This was a big company, but they were totally trying to screw me over. So anyway, that was unfortunate, but I ended up going forward or going through with the video shoot anyway, because I was like, well, I've already rented the space. I've already found a videographer who's agreed to film this project with me. I might as well record the classes and I'll just put them on my YouTube channel, right? No harm, no foul. So this was a good opportunity, a definitely a good learning opportunity to read your contracts thoroughly, okay? To not just go by what people are telling you via email or via phone call, but to actually look at the fine prints. Um, because it's happened a few times since then that what people tell me the arrangement is, is actually very different to what they have. They want me to sign in the contract. So really know your worth and know the value of your time and your effort and your energy and what, you know, you're bringing to the table. Um, this was an incredibly difficult few days. So I had to film 18 classes over a period of three days. So I had six videos to do every day. Six of those videos were hour long. They were all between 30 and 60 minutes long. I was dead. It is still by far the hardest video shoot I've ever done of my life. The classes are hard. They're long. Um, I only have a little bit of time. You know, I have to do them in three days. This is an Airbnb that I rented. Anyway, I was exhausted. Like, there's, there's kind of a mental toll also to these shoots beyond just, oh, it's difficult to do yoga for seven hours, which yeah, of course it is. It's even harder to do yoga and talk and teach while you're doing it. Right. Thankfully I had a videographer and this was a big milestone moment. I say, because this is when I found like the videographer that I still work with today. So his name is Ivan Cook. Anytime you see a video of me that has two cameras, it's because Ivan is behind the camera. He's bringing his stellar gear and he's taking care of that. I always 100% of the time do my own editing. I don't like for anyone else to edit my videos, but I love to have someone else behind the camera to make sure that the noise level is okay and that everything is recording because I can't even tell you. Guys, like if you knew how many times I had recorded a full class 
only to review it and realize that the battery died halfway or my microphone wasn't turned on or the SD card was full and I have to redo the whole thing. And it's so infuriating. So having like finding a videographer that I really loved, that understood what I needed, that was really professional. I tried like five videographers and none of them were any good. And then I saw, I met Ivan Cook. He did these 18 classes with me and I have worked with him ever since. So like all my 30 day challenges, like he did all of those. Um, He's phenomenal. I really, really love working with him, but this was a big deal. So this was a big deal because you know, something that I thought was an amazing opportunity and a breakthrough for me turned out to be a situation where I was being taken advantage of. I had to put my foot down. I had to say no to something that I was really excited to say yes to. Um, It's the most I've ever pushed my body to do. And it's also a big deal because I finally found a coworker that I could work really well with. So, you know, there were some negatives and some positive, but um, what's really nice about having a videographer that you can trust is like, like I was saying, these shoots are physically demanding because practicing yoga for many hours, you're talking, you know, teaching while I'm practicing is very, very difficult. But before there was the added piece where I was also handling production. So it's like, I had to set everything up tear everything down by myself at the end of the day, put all the lights away, put all the cameras away. I have to go back and forth to make sure, am I in focus? Is it blurry? Can you hear me well? Like it was just, it's so hard. It was really, really hard. Um, so it, it's very, very nice when you find someone who can take some of that mental load away from you. So I'm very grateful for that. Um, but I, you know, whenever I see those videos filmed in that room, it's like, it's a very bittersweet moment. Cause I just remember how I felt, you know, during that video shoot, but I'm really proud of those classes. Like they came out really, really well. Um, these ones, yeah, all done in the same. This was my sole purpose series. I don't know if any, any of you were around at this time. This was like before podcasts were a thing. I kind of wanted to do my own little podcast where I wanted to um, interview people that I thought were doing really cool things online and that were kind of in the spirituality, health, wellness, business space in one form or another. So I had this one, Candace Vandell, she's still online. Layla Martin, she has a huge online business now. Like she has really exploded. It's really, really crazy. Um, and super sister fitness, Bernie Clark. This was so nice. Okay. So obviously you guys know I'm a deep lover of yin yoga. If you love yin yoga, you probably know Bernie Clark. He's written multiple books, like probably like the the Bible of yin yoga. He wrote it. Um, He's written many other books since then. He's a phenomenal teacher. He's based out of Vancouver and it was such a beautiful moment for me to be able to interview him and I really look up to him so much and he was so nice. Like after the interview, he sent me in the mail a copy of his book, like two of his books. And I'll always remember, like I have them in my bookshelf over there somewhere, but I remember he autographed it and he signed, you are unique. And I just thought that was such a lovely thing to write in a book, you know, like I've done like book signings and stuff and I never know what to write, but I just thought that was so beautiful. And I really, I really treasured and appreciated that. So more, more of the sole purpose series. And now we're seven years in, I mean, I don't know. I'm feeling a lot of things looking back on these. I need a little bit more water. So I think at this point now, like when I look back on this era of my YouTube videos, this feels more like me, you know, like I had found my groove a little bit more. I knew what I was doing a little bit more. This shoot was wonderful. So again, see how there's two camera angles. This was Ivan Cook who was doing the video shoot for it. I I was so happy at this time in my life. You know, I had been able to quit my government job. I was doing yoga with Cassandra full time. Um, I was really pushing myself to 
step out of my comfort zone and try different things. Um, I remember, yeah, I hurt my knee in that time. So I was really working on like knee rehabilitation and, oh, and then I came out with my book. This was a big moment. Let's look at this moment together. So I've had the amazing pleasure and blessing of having two books of mine be published. The first one was this yin yoga book. And, you know, the funny thing about like, even then I'm like, I just look like a little baby. I don't know. It's so funny to see yourself um, in the past. But I remember when I got this book opportunity, the publishers, uh, this was published by DK Books. They're like a division of penguins, like a really big publishing house, but I wasn't super familiar with them. Um, they sent me an email and they said, hi, you know, something like, hi, we found you on YouTube. We've seen your yin yoga classes. We've done market research and we've determined that there's a good need for an accessible yin yoga book. We would like for you to come and write this book for us and we will pay you an X amount of dollars. And I deleted the email. <laughs> I read the email. I immediately assumed it was a scam. I assumed it was not real. I was like, you want to offer me like thousands of dollars? I think it was like, I'm probably not allowed to say, but like, let's say like $5,000 or something. Like at that time, I was like 25 years old, 26 years old. It was a massive amount of money. Okay. So I just immediately assume, oh, this is a scam. Oh yeah. Right. You found me on YouTube and you want me to write a book and you want to give me money. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. Right. So I got the email. I deleted it. I remember I was at work and the next day I thought about that email again and I was like, well, what if it wasn't a scam? <laughs> and I went back into like my junk folder or like my, tra my trash folder in my inbox. I pulled it back and I Googled the guy like who sent me the email. And I was like, oh, he's actually like an editor at this actual publishing um, company. So anyway, I wrote back to them and the rest is history. Obviously I wrote the book for them and I, that was like such a life highlight. I mean, I got to do the photo shoot for the book in California they flew me out. That was like mind blowing to me. Um, it was, it was crazy. Like that was a crazy, crazy, amazing opportunity. Um, but yeah, I almost did not get that opportunity because I literally put the email <laughs> in the trash and just assume someone was like trying to scam me and was just like a spam email because I was like, yeah, right. You want to give me money? Like blah, blah, blah. Anyway, hilarious. So it's probably a lesson in there somewhere. Um, okay. I'm almost done. I'm almost at the end of this. Can't believe some of you are actually still watching this live stream as you come with me down memory lane. Um, we'll go quickly because I kind of wanted to keep this under an hour. I wrote my book. Oh my God. Let's talk about this one. Then I went viral somehow, you know, going viral is the weirdest experience because when this 10 minute video came out, it wasn't, um, like it wasn't an immediate success. Like this video performed normally. Oh, can you not see it? Oh, that's weird. Oh, one sec. Sorry. I didn't realize it didn't work. But I'm talking about my 10 minute morning yoga full body stretch. That video has like 45 million views or something insane like that. Oh, there you go. I filmed this on a whim. I had no idea. Am I still live? Am I still here? Did it block out? Okay, I'm still here. Oh, thank God. Okay, I think it just froze a little bit. Um, but yeah, this video, when I first released it, it performed very normally, like everything else, like all my other videos. And for some reason, like six months after it was released, all of a sudden it just started taking off. And it just kept getting more views and more views and more and more and more and more until it, it's, I mean, it's on like 45 million views today. I still don't know why. I still don't know what it is about this video, why 
it all of a sudden got big. Um, you know, I've been able to look at the metrics. It wasn't shared by any like big blog or website or anything like that. So it seems like it was just YouTube recommending it to a lot of people, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And you know, the story of this class is I was, this was the end of the day. I had rented this space. I had five or six videos that I had to get through that I, you know, cause I always plan out my sequences. Okay. Like I never just teach on a whim. I always write out, I plan my sequences. I like to be very thoughtful about my classes. I want to make sure they're safe, they're meaningful, they're accessible, all that good stuff. Um, wrote everything down and I got through all of my classes and I had a little bit of time left. And I knew that I felt like I wanted a little stretch for myself. So I did this 10 minute morning yoga, full body class. And isn't it so funny that the classes that I've put the most amount of effort and energy in usually don't perform that well. <laughs> like people usually, they don't get as many views. And then I throw something together like this last minute and it completely blows up. So, you know, people have asked me before, like, how do you create a viral video? I wish I knew. I wish I knew. I don't know. I could never recreate this. This was like a lightning in a bottle kind of moment. Um, but it was a great learning opportunity because that's when I realized, oh, people really like 10 minute morning classes. <laughs> so once I, uh, once I figured that out, I, of course, started to make a lot more 10 minute morning yoga classes and just short classes in general. Because I think before that I was focusing a lot on 30 minutes, 45 minutes, 60 minutes, um, because I love those lengths, but 10 minutes is also really nice. Like I know it works a lot in people's schedules and stuff like that. So that was great. This was another big moment for me. This is when I came out with my 30 hour online yin yoga teacher training. I still have this teacher training to this day. So if you want to get certified in yin, that is my training that I put together. Super happy with that. That was a great decision, a great move for yoga with Cassandra. Then my app came out, my mobile app. That was so amazing. I can't believe I've had my mobile app for five years. That's wild. Um, I was getting a lot of complaints from people who were getting fed up with, um, you know, ads with YouTube, like YouTube is great because everything is free, you know, and I would keep doing what I'm doing, even if I made no income from it. I genuinely love being on YouTube. I love creating online yoga classes. It's super fun. Um, the only way that creators can earn an income from YouTube is to have ads like before and after your video. So I know that that's annoying to people. So I created the app because I was like, well, this way I'll be able to have all of my videos accessible without ads. People can download the videos so they can watch them offline, you know, without an internet connection. I can bring on guest teachers. I can do other kinds of programs, things like that um, at a low cost. So that was a really fun venture for me and definitely a big way for me to expand yoga with Cassandra overall. Oh man, just looking, stepping down memory lane. And you know what? I think I'm probably going to end it here. Then, you know, I kind of just kept going, doing the best that I possibly could, creating a lot of classes. This was a huge, okay, I'm going to end it on this note. Let's go through this challenge. This is a huge pivotal moment in the yoga with Cassandra life. My first 30 day challenge. This was launched in April of 2020, right at the beginning of the pandemic. I filmed these classes and prepared them in November 2019, always with the intention of launching them in April. It's 30 classes. So these were 30 videos I had to film. It took a whole like five or six days to film the entire, all of the content then I had to edit all of the videos. And even though they're only like 10 minute classes, like 10 to 15 minutes, it's two camera angles plus the audio. Like it took me a while to get through editing all of them. Then I have to like create all the marketing around them, like all the emails, all the social media posts. Like, you know, there, there's just like so much that goes into creating a challenge. I don't think people realize how demanding it is and why I am hesitant to kind of do more of them because they're just so exhausting and it's so much work. But my God, 
could I have had a better timing? No. Um, obviously, it was horrible timing worldwide because we were all being traumatized by a pandemic. Um, so that was hard. But in terms of YouTube growth, I literally could not have planned for better time if I tried. So all of a sudden, everyone is at home. People are freaking out. They're stressed. They're going a little crazy, a little stir crazy. And what I found was that it's like this really took off. Like in 2020, my channel like tripled in subscribers, basically like views and not just mine, like all platforms, like all YouTube channels for like health and fitness and wellness. Like we all saw a huge spike in 2020 because people were at home and what was happening. It's not that the people who are used to practicing in studios were going online. Yes, that was happening, but for the most part, what was really happening is that for the first time in their lives, people were willing to give yoga and meditation a go because they're cooped up, they're stressed, they're anxious, they're fearful, they're stuck with their families <laughs> inside for long periods of time. The future is uncertain. There was a lot of big mental health crisis happening on top of this public health pandemic crisis happening. So there was just like a large influx of people who were now going on YouTube and searching yoga, searching meditation, searching Pilates, searching bar, all of it, right? So I was really lucky for that, that I was ready starting April 1st. I'm sure many of you watching me might have found me during the pandemic. Maybe you did this challenge in real time. I'm super proud of this challenge. I do want to say I have a great deal of shame also tied to this challenge. Um, and maybe this is a good opportunity for me to kind of like apologize in a way and explain myself and make amends because I do have some guilt and shame around this, even though like most of my feelings towards the challenge are super positive because it was like awesome and it did really well. Um, and it was a great decision. There's one video that I cringe and I, I, I don't even want to open it. I don't even want to look at it, but I know it's this day five. So if you guys did this challenge with me, or if you've already done it, you know that each day had a yoga class and an affirmation, right? So I love affirmations. I use them all the time. I've had programs based around affirmations. It's a huge deal. I have my own affirmation card deck that are sold in stores. Like I love it. Okay. I'm a big believer in it. So every day had like a positive affirmation on day five. I made a horrible mistake of using the affirmation. I am a money magnet. And boy, did I offend some people with that. And now that it's like, I can't believe, like, I can't believe I was dumb enough to use that affirmation. Like the me of today would never do that. Like the me of today would be socially aware enough and sensitive enough to know that this is not the kind of affirmation I can just throw into a yoga class without further clarification and education. And it's just not a good idea. What happened is that I love that affirmation. Okay. Like I wrote a list of 30 of my all time favorite affirmations that I use all the time. And I love affirmations that have to do with abundance of all sorts, abundance of health, of wealth, of love, of joy, right? So for me, I am a money magnet was such a positive, like a feel good statement. Like, hell yeah, give me, I do want to be a money magnet. Like I don't want to um, survive in this world. I want to thrive. Like I have other affirmations that I really love and treasure. Like making money is good for me and for everyone in my life. You know, the more money I have, the more good I'm able to do into the, do in the world. Like that is really my perspective on money. So to me, it was really powerful and positive, but of course, for a lot of people, it was really offensive to have an affirmation and jarring to have an affirmation tied with money in their yoga practice. They felt it was very superficial, very vain, very insensitive. Um, 
like they were offended. Like I heard, I heard people's feelings. They were offended. And man, like, I feel so bad about that. Like, I feel so, so, so bad about that. If I could go back and erase it, I can't even tell you how many times I thought of deleting this video entirely, but I can't because it's part of a 30 day series and it'd be really weird if all of a sudden there was no day five. Um, but I do want to like apologize, you know, because I understand that not everyone feels the way I do, you know, and that some people are really struggling and some people do not have, um, I don't know, like they just don't want to hear that when they're on their yoga mats. Like today, I would never, ever, ever use an affirmation like that just thrown into the mix of a yoga class. So I do apologize for that. That is definitely like a big mistake of mine that I made. And you know, I'm reading comments and some people are like, what's the big deal? And other people are like, yeah, it was offensive. And it's like the, the response was really varied, like all over the place. I've always said with affirmations, it's a great opportunity for shadow work. So when you're using affirmations as a tool, uh, like for a spiritual practice, like as a tool for personal growth, okay, we can just leave spirituality out of it. Just like as a tool to learn more about yourself and to grow as a person. With affirmations, you're trying to see how do I feel when I hear this statement? If a statement feels good, it's most likely already true for you. You know, there's probably no wounds to be healed. There's no work to be done around it because it already feels good. You know, my all-time favorite affirmation is all is well and I am safe. That's something that I repeat to myself many times, usually every day. Some affirmations are really hard. Like I'll hear them I'll tell them to myself and I know I don't quite believe it. You know, like something like I love and accept my body exactly as it is. Well, some days I don't, <laughs> you know, some days I'm having a really bad body image day and I don't like the way I look or I don't like the way I'm feeling or the way I'm moving or I'm comparing myself to other people. And that doesn't mean that the affirmation is wrong. It doesn't mean the affirmation is bad. It doesn't mean the affirmation is unhealthy for me. It means that if I'm not feeling comfortable with this affirmation, it means that this is an opportunity for growth, for self-inquiry, and for healing. It means there's a wound in there, right? Like there's a low self-esteem in there, wound for me that says like, well, why can't I love and appreciate my body exactly as it is, right? So that's the way I use affirmations. Um, but of course, in a little 10-minute yoga class, I don't have the time to go through that whole spiel with people. So I really do understand that. I was very insensitive um, with that affirmation and I really hurt a lot of people and I'm such a people pleaser. The last thing I want to do is ever upset other people or um, just offend them or feel like I betrayed them in a certain way. Like I really feel very bad about it. Um, but anyway, it is what it is. Now you guys know the shame I carry still around this day five video. I'm so sorry. Rest assured, I will not be incorporated incorporating money affirmations in my videos going forward unless it's a yoga class specifically designed and built around that. Oh, you know what? Felt good to felt good to get that off my chest. I think I'm going to end it here. You know, now I feel like we're three years ago. Like this is all, this is like the me I know and recognize. And this makes more sense, I think. Um, so let me just rearrange the screen here. One sec. My computer is freezing. Don't die on me. Uh-oh. Okay. I don't know if you guys can...
Okay, what about now? Can you, yeah, you can hear me now, right? Perfect. Can you guys give me like a thumbs up or something? Or just let me know in the comments. I see the bars on my end. Yes, perfect. Okay, sorry. I don't know what happened. It's when I switched the screen and got rid of the YouTube screen and went back to just me. It kind of uh, messed up. But yes, thank you for our understanding. But, you know, I still did want to get it off my chest. And I do think it's important to um, own up to mistakes that you've made. And I think it's important to apologize to the people that you need to apologize to. And even if, you know, it's important to distinguish like intent versus impact. You know, I think there's been a lot of conversation around this um, over the past few years, and it's been a really good learning opportunity for me. It's like, of course, my intentions were good, right? My intentions were to empower people to feel good about wealth. Like I would love everyone to be wealthy and to have all of their needs met and to be able to have an amazing life, right? Okay. That's the intention. The intention is pure. It is good, but the impact can be not so great. You know, some people do get offended. They do get hurt. They are put off and that's valid and it's true. So it's worth acknowledging, you know, and kind of apologizing for or trying to explain and provide context for. So it was important for me to do that. Okay. I think I'm going to end it now. Thank you guys so much. This was really fun. This was a fun little trip down memory lane for me. Um, yeah, I'm really... I cannot believe it has been 10 years. Thank you for practicing with me, for subscribing to my channel, um, for watching my videos. And I don't know, just like being such a fun part of this community. I really do appreciate it. And I don't know, we'll see what the future future holds. Like I'm, I'm not planning on going away anytime soon. So I'm still going to be, you know, releasing a video a week. I kind of have slowed down a little bit in terms of my workload, which is really lovely because like you guys heard at the beginning, I used to work like a crazy person and now I have way more balance and way more ease in my life that I really love. Um, but yeah, I'm not leaving YouTube. I just don't know what else I'm going to do. You know what I mean? Like usually I have a, a project on the go. Usually I'm planning like, like the past two years, it's been the launch of my new book or like the launch of like the affirmation cards, or I've been working on like a 30 day challenge or something like that. And right now, 2024, I don't have any of that, you know, like I don't have anything planned for the rest of the year. And I kind of love it. Like I'm kind of happy with that. So I like just continuing along with the weekly YouTube uploads and just leaving space for whatever else arises. It's starting to be spring here. So soon I'll be able to record outside, which is really fun. I know you guys love when I film on my little yoga deck with the little birds. Um, it's really fun for me as well. Okay. All right. I'm going to leave you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in, for listening to me ramble. Thank you for practicing with me. And I hope you have an absolutely amazing Friday afternoon. Okay. Bye guys.